Lands by Charles Hoy Fort, Part 1, Chapter 11 I, that the stars are near, think of a ship slowly sailing past a seacoast town, firing with smokeless powder, say, shells from it burst before quite reaching the town, and all explosion points are in line between the city and the ship, or are traceable to one such radiant, the bombardment continues, the ship moves slowly, still all points of exploding shells are traceable to one point between the ship and the town, the bombardment goes on and goes on and goes on, and the ship is far from its first position. The point of exploding shells is still between the ship and the town. Wise men in the town say that the shells are not coming from the ship. They say this because formerly they had said that shells could not come from a ship. They reason, therefore shells are not coming from this ship. They are asked how, then, the point of explosion could so shift exactly in line with the moving ship. If there be a William Frederick Denning among them, he will say, I cannot explain. But the other wise men will be like Professor Moulton, for instance. In his books, Professor Moulton writes a great deal upon the subject of meteors, but he does not mention the meteors that, for months at a time, appear between observers and a shifting constellation. There are other considerations. The shells are heard to explode. So then they explode near the town. But there is something the matter with that smokeless powder aboard ship. Very feeble projectile force, because also must the shells be exploding near the ship, or the radiant point would not have the same background, as seen from different parts of the town. Then, in this town, inhabitants, provided they be not wise men, will conclude that, if the explosion point is near the town, and is also near the ship, the ship is near the town. Leo and Lyra and Andromeda are ghosts that sail the sky and that bombard this earth, and that they are not far away. And some of us there may be who, instead of trying to speculate upon an unthinkable remoteness, will suffer a sensitiveness to proximity instead, enter in a revolt against a black encompassment that glitters with a light beyond, and wonder what exists in a brilliant environment not far away, and a new anguish for hyperesthesia upon this earth. A suffocating consciousness of the pressure of the stars, the sickle of Leo, from which come the Leonids, gleams like a great question mark in the sky. The answer. But God knows what the answer to anything is. Perhaps it is that the stars are very close indeed.